Hi, my name is Dave Bode for Tuts Plus, and thanks so much for checking out this video. So we're gonna pick up where we left off in the last part of this series. We're gonna take a look at another little, very short composition idea here. And the idea is to create something that sounds Christmassy and wintry and gives that kind of vibe. So uh, let me play uh, this second part again, in case you didn't check it out in the first part of this series. You can see we have the first part of the composition over here. And we have the second part of the composition right here, which is basically just a, a different theme, but I just stuck it in the same project here. So let me play it down for you and we'll check it out. So there it is, a pretty simplistic idea, nothing too fancy in there. Again, we're working with strings, no brass this time, a little bit more woodwinds, and we'll look at that in a little bit. A couple of choral patches here, celeste, a little glockenspiel, some twinkly bells, a marked tree, as it were, and uh, just one note of tubular bells here. So this first piece I, I titled Christmas Mischief, and the second piece doesn't really have a, a title here, but to me, it sounds like more of a wintry dream, kind of a wintry fantasy thing. And that's basically built on these choir and celeste elements here. Just a real simple melody here and a little arpeggiating celeste here. And this celeste, by the way, this is just a standard contact instrument. It just comes with the contact factory library. And it's nothing fantastic, to be sure. It has one group, I don't think it has any round robin, but it does have four velocity layers, which is not awful. And I think it sounds pretty good. I don't have a better Celeste, I don't have a dedicated Celeste library, no Cine samples has Randy's Celeste as part of their collection, and also they have a Celeste in one of their Cine Perk series, and I'm sure there's some other Celestes out there, but I think this one does a pretty good job. I think it's one of the only standard contact instruments that I used in these pieces. Not that the standard contact instruments are bad, but there are definitely some better tools out there. But it's always nice to remember that, you know, if you have contact, there are some pretty decent sounds in there. I know for me, whenever I am, you know, thinking about a new sound, I never think to kind of re-explore the stuff that's already in contact. I'm always just looking for a new library. But maybe that's just because I like new stuff and buying things gives me that feel of Christmas, like I get presents. So we have this really simple arpeggio idea here. And this is nothing really spectacular. I didn't give this a tremendous amount of thought. Just kind of played it down a handful of times to work out what I wanted the chords to be here. Um, I think about halfway through this, I realized that it would sound cool to have the second chord in each one, because each one of these chords basically repeats twice, and to have the second one in the next inversion. So instead of starting with the root note, it would start with the with the third in the bass. I think it's okay the way it stands. And basically we have this same kind of minor feel here. We start off with a, a G minor chord, and then it goes to a an E flat chord in the first inversion, so this kind of feel. which has a very kind of mysterious sound to it. We went up one more half step. 
it would have almost a spy sound. Let me go to an F major chord in the first inversion. And then the second inversion. And then a B flat major chord. Then the E flat chord again. We have a C minor chord. And then in the second one, it's actually a C minor seven chord. And then it goes to an A major in first inversion. And then kind of an A7 in second inversion, which almost sounds like a diminished seventh chord, which essentially is very similar to a dominant seventh chord. And then just a little turnaround at the very end. So a real simple just chord progression there. And then I wanted to layer on top of this just a really simple melody here. And I often struggle with making things simple. That's the curse of a tinkerer, I guess. You know, you always want to make things better. And I think one of the things that makes a lot of very beautiful Christmas music work is its simplicity. At the core of the Christmas idea, it's, you know, about giving. It's not a complex thing, you know. It's about generosity. And, and so the, the same thing, I think, works its way into musical pieces. You know, a lot of the Christmas carols, um, the traditional Christmas hymns, if you will, are really quite simple, uh, melodically and harmonically. In creating this melody, I wanted to try and keep it really, really simple and also keep it a little bit realistic because um, a lot of times, well, at least for me, I forget that real instrumentalists and real singers, they need to breathe. It's always a good idea to give a even a virtual musician some breathing room because if you wrote, you know, this as one giant phrase, they would not be able to make it. So... And with a real simple library like this, you know, I just wanted to use the ooze. Um, this doesn't have a whole lot of phrase making capabilities with a lot of words or anything. So I just want to keep it real simple. And also keep the melody, you know, just this very simple idea. Bum, 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 bum. Once I kind of settled on the basic shape of the melody, I tried to use that in each one of these little phrases. Bum, 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 bum. Four notes ascending, and then a little break, and then four notes descending. I probably could use a little bit more work in automating the legato transition volume because some of them jump out. Some of the speeds are not exactly optimal. And then in the second part of this is basically just a repeat of the A section, but with a little bit more orchestration, a little bit more instrumentation, and a nice harmony line here. just automated the volume of some of those legato transitions. Some of those notes there are a little bit abrupt. You can see that this note transition right here from this B flat or A sharp to this A. The other thing that I automated is the note attack, which is basically just kind of a swell parameter. To try and smooth things out just a little bit. I think that works pretty good there, so just a couple of small adjustments in there really helped to clean that up. But I love in this B section here where you get these really cool sweeping. Oh, 
harmonies in there. And so that's what went into making that melody in there. A couple of small tweaks there. Again, this is kind of a work in progress. This, these are not finished tracks by any means. In the woodwinds, we have something very simple going on here. texture is really, really beautiful. And the strings sounds really, really nice too. Check that out. These could use just a little bit more shaping. The thing that really makes it sound beautiful is that, that higher bassoon part in there. The lower bassoon part is basically just doubling the first bassoon an octave down. And then in the strings, just a real simple thing here. The cello and the viola. The ensemble's doing the pizzicato, although I could have just done that in the bass. Just some long legato tones in there. Then the second violins and the first violins are doing this really nice tremolo thing. I think it has a really beautiful texture uh, with that combination. Pretty similar to what I used in the last composition example. But it had a it had a different kind of intensity before that was kind of driving with the stock of decimals, jun, 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 and it had more of a pulse. This is just kind of an overall kind of icing uh, on our cake, if you will. So it's a pretty simplistic arrangement here. You know, we don't have a tremendous amount going on. We have strings, we have woodwinds, and celeste voices, and a little bit of percussion. One of the things that makes that nice little transition work is that mark tree. Really helps to make it feel magical. And a little bit of bells on top there. Now it's tricky to work with Celeste and Glockenspiel because they sound very similar. The thing that I found with Celeste and Glockenspiel is that you really have to kind of balance them out. Uh, originally I had the Glockenspiel just a little bit louder of a dynamic 
and even mixed up a little bit more, but it felt like it was just competing and it was distracting from the Celeste. So I try to bring it down as much as possible. To make it sound like, you know, it was all one thing, because if we, even if we take this and we, we bump it up, then all, the, all of a sudden that becomes, that becomes way out front, and it doesn't sound like it's working cohesively with the Celeste, which is, which is what I wanted. I wanted the, the same idea in the Celeste, but I just wanted to enhance it with a little bit more texture and a little bit more zingy punch there. And then to end it, all I did was... I gave that really great uh, tubular bell hit in there, and actually we probably could... I could throw one right here too. That might work. Maybe... Maybe really quietly. I don't think there's a lot of dynamic range in there, but... That's the only G we got, so that'll work. <laughs> Using a lot of bells, a lot of bell-like instruments, you know, chalice, tubular bell, glockenspiel, all those kind of things. A lot of it has to do with bells, because I think that's one of the sounds we've been kind of programmed to recognize as being associated with Christmas is, you know, the, the bells, especially jingle bells, right? And that's obvious. But also, you know, melodic and percussive bells as well. Having it centered around bells really helps to give it that magical kind of feel. You know, bells, especially glockenspiel, has this this kind of icy, wintry tone. It's kind of brittle. You know, it's kind of cold. These are things that we associate with ice. And so that's why I think it works really well. And certainly, you know, works in a lot of other stuff, but and, you know, we could add bells to this. And if I did that, I would probably need a, a stronger downbeat, so I'd probably use some timpani in there as well, just to give some nice downbeats. except for that last note there. So just in case you didn't catch it in the last video, uh, the libraries that I'm using here have cinematic strings here for the strings, and the woodwinds are these really beautiful Berlin woodwinds from Orchestral Tools. The percussion is all Cineperk by Cinesamples, at least most of it is, Glockenspiel, Timpani, and that kind of jazz. That's all Cine samples, Cineperk. The Celeste, that's a stock contact instrument there. The choir, I'm sure you saw, that's Sound Iron's Olympus Elements, and this is one of their Legato women. And I use the time stretch patch here so that I can get some of those Legato transitions worked out just a little bit better. Sometimes, you know, it really depends on the dynamic. You know, sometimes if it's a, a nice medium dynamic, you don't have to mess with the legato transition, the volume, the speed of it, all that much. But if it's really, really quiet, then sometimes those legato transitions can jump out and then they sound a little bit more abrupt and they need just a, a hair more massaging to make it sound right. And you can see that in the beginning part of this, the dynamic on 
the women here, this is the mod wheel, so this is controlling basically the swell or the, the volume, is pretty low. And in fact, it never really gets up to their highest dynamic. It, the most it gets is basically just under three quarters here. And that was on purpose. You know, I, I wanted to keep things really, really quiet. And I don't believe that that library is a multi-dynamic sampled library. But I wanted everything to be really, really low. I didn't want to have to make really loud voices and then bring everything else up to match because I wanted those strings to have that really intimate, intense, very piano feel to them. And they are all doing just a really low dynamic here. I mean, we barely get above like a quarter of the dynamic range there for most of those. You can see this is the second violin. This is the viola, which gets just a little bit above there. The cello, not much above there. The basses, there's nothing in the basses in this composition, but the pizzicato, that never gets really at a very loud dynamic. That's all very, 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 very quiet, very, very understated. All of the woodwinds follow the same, the same theme there. They don't ever really get into their their upper range. Everything is very, very kind of medium of the road. You know, I wanted to keep it really quiet, really delicate, really intense. Even the celeste is, let's see the, uh, the velocity down here. That's all very, very quiet too. I, I didn't want those really hard, you know, the higher velocity samples on there. I wanted to keep it all very nice and mellow and quiet and intimate. That's definitely a challenge to do because it's pretty easy to just make things loud and then just balance the levels. But it's it's a much more subtle thing to try and get things really quiet and have everything at a quiet dynamic level, but still keep it full and rich and textured. You know, it's, it's a lot of kind of dynamic management between the different libraries and, you know, levels management. And in this, I basically, I didn't really mix anything. There's no mix automation on anything really. It's just, I did it all with the dynamic levels. Um, I didn't use any CC 11, which is expression, which is essentially just the volume um, or CC 12, which sometimes is mapped to volume as well. Just did everything with the dynamics, the mod wheel and the velocity to try and get this just balanced and dialed in here. And it is pretty low. I mean, if you look at my, my master effects here, if I turn this off, I mean, the, the peaks on this before any of these mastering effects get in there are, you know, basically negative six. So it's not very loud at all. And I'm using just a little bit of limiting. I don't think I'm boosting the gain with the compression, but in fact, the compressions, there is no compression on it. Um, there's a multiband compressor that's just giving everything just a tiny bump, a two decibel bump across the board and just compressing some of the frequencies just a little bit. It makes it sound just a little bit sweeter. And then the limiter is, is just bringing up the level just a hair, you know, three and a half decibels, I think is, is where it's bringing it up. I think creating these pieces is a lot of fun. It's a, it's a challenge to keep it very delicate and very intimate. But those are the ideas that I think about when I'm putting these pieces of music together and getting into that Christmas spirit with these little musical ideas and this orchestration. Again, thanks so much for checking out this tutorial. My name is Dave Bodie for Tuts Plus, and we'll see you around.